Bismillah, assalamu alaikum. So, uh, January 28th, it's the morning after um, the death of Kobe Bryant, his daughter, and seven others in Southern California. I'm actually in Southern California right now. Uh, it's a very somber mood. There's a lot of sorrow. There's a lot of sadness for his passing and the passing of those that uh, were with him in that uh, tragic uh, helicopter crash. And I think that one of the things that came to mind this morning over breakfast as I was, you know, sitting in my hotel and watching uh, the news and they were talking about the vigils that have been there all night for him is that, you know, sometimes we get caught up in this idea of, well, it's just one person. He was just, a, you know, an athlete. And we forget what people in the public eye many times symbolize for us, whether that person is an athlete. Uh, a musician, an actor, a philanthropist, an activist, a business tycoon, uh, whether that person is a father, a mother, an uncle, an older brother or sister, people that we see as invincible in life when they pass, it can really hit hard, harder than the deaths of others. Because it's not simply about the death, but it's about the death of what they symbolized for us in our, in our minds, in our hearts. And there's no doubt that somebody like Kobe Bryant had touched the hearts of millions. Um, that, you know, he was a person that inspired people to greatness for the great things that he had done. I'm not going to claim that I, I, I understand all of that because... My, Anyone who knows me knows that I don't really understand sports, but I understand greatness. I understand when a person has been a role model for so many and has inspired so many, and I can definitely see that effect that he's had on people in my family, uh, friends, so on and so forth. And so for, you know, when I think about this, I think, what is it about the idea of invincibility uh, being removed that is so jolting to us? And, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about death as an unveiler. It's something that unveils for us the truth. So we've taken the veil off of you, right? Uh, we, we, you know, so your eyesight is sharp on that day. This is the day of judgment, obviously, but you know, recalling death before then gives us insight into our lack of invincibility as others were also not invincible. We can achieve greatness without having to be invincible. We can, we can do monumentous things and have immense effect on people's lives without having to be sinless, perfect, invincible. Uh, Yazid al-Raqashi came to Umar ibn Abdul Aziz on his deathbed. And so Umar said to him, Awsini, give me advice. Yazid said, you're not the first Khalifa to die. He said, tell me more. He said, there's not a single person from your father to your grandfather to your great-grandfather all the way back to Adam, except that he has faced this crucible has dealt, dealt with this difficulty and has tasted from the cup, drank from the cup of death. He said, increase me. Tell me more. He said, there is no station between heaven and hell. Righteous people, the righteous are in felicity and the, 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 the sinful in the fire. So you know better your righteousness and your sin. So look to that. Umar anhu wa rahimahu cried so profusely that he fell out of his bed. So in death, there is a great reminder that we don't have to be invincible to be great. We don't have to be sinless and without mistake to be great. 
we can still do and inspire both in our lives and after our lives even if we are not as uh, as as uh, as bulletproof as we like to think that we are uh, as, as uh, even if we are not um, you know you know made of Teflon we don't have to be you don't have to be that to be able to be great and do great things and inspire greatness in others there's another um, as another narration that uh, Abu Hazm came to Umar radiallahu anhu rahimahu Umar ibn Abdul Aziz that is and he said to him awsini awsini give me advice so Abu Hazm said to him when you go to when you go to bed tonight I want you to lie on your lie on your back and envision that death is standing at your head standing hovering over you at your head and then at that moment I want you to think about every good thing about yourself every good character and deed and then I want you to resolve and commit to doing that good and I want you to think about every bad character and bad act and I want you to resolve in that moment to abstain from it because you don't know how close your final moment really is so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be able to be those that strive for greatness while recognizing our frailty strive for great effect on others without having to be invincible and are able to take uh, the admonition that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends us when there is such a widespread um, uh, when there is such a widespread uh, and, and, uh, and, and, and well-known death take the admission the admonition that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us وَكَفَى بِالْمَوْتِ وَاعِلَى as death is sufficient enough as an, as an admonishment. Assalamu alaikum.